I think I'm going to be in trouble. Pleasant good afternoon, boys and girls. I am in so much trouble because guess what? I did not get home in time for Children's Bible Minutes. And so Graffy and Mookie can't be with me this afternoon. And I know that when I get home, I am going to get an ear full of scolding. Yeah, I am here in the church office. And you know what? I like being in the church office and I was doing a lot of work. And so I did not get home in time for today's Children's Bible Minutes. But we are still going to have it because I don't want you to miss it, even if Graffy and Mookie can't be with me. Today, we are continuing our look at the Catechism, and we are continuing our look at Section 16, which is the Sacraments. And we have looked at Baptism. We have looked at Confirmation. We have looked at... What else did we look at so far? Let me grab my book. Ta-da! The one in church is actually red, guys. And we are going to be looking at today in ad well additional sacraments is what they're called and what we will be looking at we will be looking at well last time we looked at confirmation as additional and today we're going to be look at ordinations so let's listen to what our catechism video has to say before we come back and speak a little bit about ordinations let's have a listen Question number 127. What is ordination? Ordination is the right in which God gives authority and the grace of the Holy Spirit to those being made bishops, priests, and deacons through prayer and the laying on of hands by bishops. That was very sharp, right? Extremely sharp because it's just one question. Because after that, we go into the, uh, the, the next additional sacrament and Ordination is, let me tell you, it's an important one for me because I have been ordained twice in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. First as a deacon and then as a priest. And ordination is special because it's a point in time where someone can dedicate themselves to a life of service. And I have a perfect Bible reading for that. Our Bible reading for today comes from Romans 12, 3 to 8. And it might not use the word priest, might not use the word deacon, might not even use the word bishop, but these people are all ordained in order that they could serve other people. Let's have a listen to our reading. three through eight for by the grace given me I say to every one of you do not think of yourself more highly than you ought but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you for just as each of us has one body with many members and these members do not all have the same function so in Christ we though many form one body and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. There we had, there we had 
our readings from Romans 12, 3 to 8. And it talks about different gifts. And guess what? It is recognizing that we have gifts that we could give to God that actually allows people to hear when God calls them in order that they could serve. Now, everybody has a call from God and everybody could serve God. But there are a few people who go one step further to the process of ordination, which means they go and they study to learn about the history of the church, to learn about the rules of the church, to learn about how best they could give their life to the service of God, true service to the church. And guess what? Libby and Kai are here. Mm -hmm. You remember Libby and Kai? They are here to tell us all about ordination. So let's have a listen to what they have to say. They said it'll be at least an hour wait. Not if I can help it. You can't pretend to be a priest. Oh, watch me. Come on, how hard could it be? Bad idea. They started confessing. Oh, to what? Welcome to Catholic Central. I'm Kai. And I'm Libby. Today, we'll be talking about holy orders. As in sacrament of, not my Etsy site with custom-made holy water fonts. Holy orders is the sacrament through which the mission entrusted by Christ to his apostles continues to be exercised in the church until the end of time. Put another way, it's what makes priests, bishops, and deacons into, well, priests, bishops, and deacons. So, where does this sacrament come from? Why do all the rules for it matter? Shouldn't we be able to skip the middlemen and go straight to God? Catholics admit that doing things this way can make things, shall we say, inconvenient. The whole wedding is held up because the priest is late. But it also maintains this sacrament as truly special and unique. To understand it, though, we need to look at how anyone can become a priest. Uh... Through baptism. Whew. All Christians are baptized as priest, prophet, and king. This gives each Christian a special mission to make sacrifices and serve others, helping everyone they meet to better know and love God. This forms the foundation for the ordained priesthood. Which takes that mission and combines it with examples from the Old Testament and Jesus himself. The Israelites had a priestly class, starting with Moses and his brother Aaron. Aaron was designated high priest of what was later known as the Levitical priesthood after the tribe of Levi. The priests in those days maintained the sacred space of the temple and offered sacrifice on high holy days. Then when Jesus came along, he started forgiving sinners, healing the sick, and exercising demons. And Catholics believe that he also established the Eucharist at the Last Supper. And accepted baptism from John the Baptist, even though, let's be honest, he didn't really need to. By getting baptized himself, Catholics believe that Jesus showed us that we do need someone and something else to go to God. That collective someone are priests, and that something are the sacraments, which are reflections of what Jesus did in his ministry. Jesus confirms this by handing on these ministries to his apostles. After Jesus' ascension, the Holy Spirit descended on the apostles, and they spread throughout the known world to preach and serve. But that's a big job for just 12 guys. So they worked with the local churches to identify more leaders. They trained and anointed people for formal roles in the church. Within the first two centuries, these came to be bishops, in Greek, episkopos. These were leaders of regional and local churches. They enlivened and guided the activity of a place, but also united that local place with the universal church. The church around the world that came to be based in Rome. Priests, called presbyters, were people who dedicated their whole life to assist the local bishop, officiate at sacraments and religious services, and coordinate the service of all the people, especially the poor and needy. These also came to be known as priests because of the sacrificial nature of presiding at the Eucharist, and for their connection to Jesus, the high priest. And that's why Catholics even today say that priests are in persona Christi. Catholics believe that when the priest pronounces the words of a sacrament, he is acting in the person of Christ. And bishops act in the person of Christ during their weekly multiplication of loaves and fishes. We wish. Actually, bishops act as Christ in their role as leaders of the church. Hi. Yeah, are you ever going to mention deacons? Uh, because it's always priests this, bishops that. Deacons get no respect. Sorry, deacon. Deacons were chosen in the book of Acts to help with the distribution of food so that the apostles could focus on prayer and preaching. Nowadays, the sacrament of holy orders happens through a process called ordination. And Catholics believe that, like baptism and confirmation, ordination changes a person in the very core of who they are. Ordination is a 
permanent change, creating what is sometimes called an indelible or unerasable mark on the soul. Ordination happens through the laying on of hands, which is a throwback to the apostles. In the Catholic Church, there are three things you can be ordained. Deacon. Thank you. Priest and bishop. The difference between them are what they do. Deacons preach, witness marriages, and perform baptisms. But they can't consecrate the Eucharist, hear confessions, confirm the faithful, or anoint the sick. Some men are permanent deacons, men who heard the call to dedicate themselves in a unique way to God while still living in the world, often having an outside job and a family. But men also pass through the diaconate on the way to the priesthood. Uh, priests do all the sacraments, but can't ordain other priests or deacons. That's for bishops to handle. Handle? You're laying out of hands? Get it? Catholics take ordination seriously. To get to the point of getting ordained a priest, men go through six to nine years of discernment, prayer, extensive applications. Background checks, conversations with directors of vocation, psychological testing. Studies in philosophy and theology and seminary and supervised ministry. Now, once ordained, daily life as a priest varies, depending on several things. One is whether a priest is ordained into the diocesan priesthood or a religious order. Diocesan priests commit themselves to a specific geographical area, and most of them focus on serving those in the parish his bishop assigns to him. On the other hand, priests in religious orders serve all over the map. They're ordained for a particular mission, spirituality, and common life. So you might find priests doing everything from teaching to serving the poor or working in the media. No matter if it's diocesan or religious priesthood, though, you have to start with aptitude for service, a strong life of prayer, intellectual ability, social and psychological maturity, physical ability, and most importantly, a call from God. A call which is also confirmed by the community, including a candidate's superiors and bishop. Right. It's like marriage. You can't just show up at Ryan Gosling's house in a wedding gown and expect a ceremony to happen. Not that I ever tried that. No, certainly not. And just like a wedding doesn't automatically make you the perfect spouse, ordination doesn't make someone perfect. But it does allow deacons, priests, and bishops to give their lives in service to the church and accompany the faithful in the greatest joys and sorrows of life. Since all Christians are proclaimed priest, prophet, and king at baptism, the sacrament of holy orders gives us all an example of how to be Christ to one another speak the truth, and lead others to faith. From all of us here at Catholic Central, thanks for watching. I'm Libby. And I'm Kai. Be sure to check out our website, catholiccentral.com, for more on holy orders. And be sure to check out our other episodes on the sacraments, and hit subscribe on YouTube. And be sure to check out Libby's Etsy site with holy water fonts. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. They're great. We want to thank Kai and Libby for leading us in that one and explaining so clearly for us what it is all about in terms of the holy orders. And you heard people could be ordained bishops, priests, or deacons. And while everybody is called to serve, these people have a special call upon their life to give their life fully and dedicate it to God. Now, in the Catholic Church, they still don't have female priests, but in our church, we do. Mm-hmm. We do have female priests. Hi, I'm a female priest. And we don't see gender as something that defines whether you can or cannot serve the Lord in that particular way. And you know what? That's it for today. That's all we are looking at for today. We simply have our Bible song, which is from LDS Children's Ministry. And that one is called Call to Serve. But before we do, would you mind if we said a word of prayer? Excellent. Could you bow your heads and close your eyes? Awesome. Let us pray. Good afternoon, God. God, first of all, I am sorry I couldn't get home to get Rafi and Muki, but um, I hope they will forgive me. God, we thank you for the opportunity to hear from your word. And we heard today all about the holy orders and the ordination by the laying on of hand and the praying in of the spirit for people to serve you in particular roles and ministries. We heard about the call to be a bishop. We heard about the call to be a priest and the call to be a deacon. And of course, we heard about the call that is on everybody's life in order to serve. But priests, deacons, and bishops have a special ministry that they exercise for you. God, we just ask your blessing on all of our deacons, on all of our priests, on all of our bishops in our province and in our diocese. And we pray for those persons who are still prayerfully deciding whether or not they want to fully commit themselves and their lives to you to a ministry of service through holy ordination. We pray that your spirit will raise up more people to be bold enough to say, here I am, Lord, use me. 
God, we thank you for the opportunity to come into your presence and learn from your word. And we give you thanks for the sacrifice of salvation that the greatest high priest, Jesus himself, made on our behalf. We lift our prayers unto you, Lord, through the name of your most precious son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, boys and girls, that is all the time we have for today. We're going to close off with this one from LDS Kids, Call to Serve. Now, it's the weekend, and I know you're going to want to go places, but please stay home if you can, and if you're going to go out, wear your mask, wash your hands, and watch your distance. Above all else, do not forget that God loves you, and we do too. Even though they're not here, Mookie and Graffy love you a whole heap a lot. Until next time, God bless, and bye for now. Thank you.